Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. Today I want to talk about DNA. Before we get into transcription, translation, mitosis, meiosis, Mendelian genetics, all of these things are based on DNA. And so we should have a real good understanding of what DNA is. Now, uh, this, this animation here is just gorgeous as DNA spins, and it gets this reputation for being a kind of a mysterious, magical kind of a molecule. But it's actually pretty simple compared to proteins. It's pretty straightforward, and so you should understand the parts of it. And so basically, the building blocks of DNA are nucleotides. And so just like carbohydrates are made of sugars and protein is made of amino acids, the building blocks of nucleic acids, both DNA and RNA, are going to be nucleotides. And so here's one nucleotide right here. Um, a simpler one, if we were to look at uh, basically the building blocks of RNA, you've seen uh, something that looks like a nucleotide before. Because if you take the adenine and a ribose sugar and then add three phosphates to it, then you have ATP. So you've seen something that looks a lot like this. But a you know, nucleotide has three parts to it. So part one is going to be this purpley part. And that's going to be what's called a nitrogenous base. And so in DNA, there are four types of nitrogenous bases. This one pictured here is called guanine. Um, but there are three other types in DNA. So you've got guanine, you also have cytosine, thymine, and adenine. So when you see these letters in DNA, what they're really referring to is this nitrogenous base. And the reason it's called a nitrogenous base, just look at all the nitrogen that we have inside there. So that's a nitrogenous base. They come in two different types. Some of the nitrogenous bases, uh, like this one, are called purines. Purines are going to have two of these carbon chains. Uh, the purines uh, are going to be guanine, so that'd be one purine, and then the other one's going to be adenine. Uh, we'll also have some that are a little simpler. They're not quite as big, and those are going to co be called pyrimidines. Pyrimidines. Uh, pyrimidines, uh, the ones in DNA are going to be cytosine and thymine. And I'll show you those in just a second. So the first part of a nucleotide is going to be the nitrogenous base. The second part is going to be this sugar right here. And in DNA, that's called deoxyribose sugar. Now in RNA, that's going to be a ribose sugar. But in DNA, it's going to be a deoxyribose sugar. And the reason why is if you were to look right here in a ribose sugar found in RNA, there'd be a hydroxyl group coming off of it. But in DNA, you're missing that oxygen, and so we call it D or missing ox oxyribose, so deoxyribose sugar. So that'd be the sugar right here. And then the third thing that's going to be found is a phosphate group. And so a phosphate group, we're familiar with that from ATP, that's going to be a phosphate group right here. Um, and so those are the building blocks of nucleotides. And so let me get my writing out of the way, and we'll go to the next slide. And so now this is maybe a little bit more familiar when you're looking at the structure of DNA. And so this right here, this nucleotide that we just kind of went over the parts of it, that nucleotide is going to be found right here. Now one more thing I should mention about nucleotides is that if you look up here on DNA, there's a 3 prime end to DNA, and then there's a 5 prime end. And so what does that mean? Well, that's going to refer to the sugar itself. And so the sugar itself is going to have, since carbon's so uh, ubiquitous or it's found everywhere in organic material, we don't even draw the symbol on here. So there would be a carbon right here, a carbon right here, a carbon here, a carbon here, and then a carbon here. And so we simply number those carbons. And so this carbon right here is called the one prime carbon. This one is called the two prime carbon. This one right here would be the three prime carbon. This would be the four prime carbon. And then this would be the five prime carbon right here. And so the three prime carbon is going to be coming off this side, five prime coming off the other side. And so basically, when you're looking at DNA, this right here would be the three prime carbon, and this down here would be the five prime carbon. So when you hear DNA uh, and the idea that DNA flows from three to five prime, well, if you look at all these deoxyribose sugar with the oxygen on the top, they're going to flow in this direction from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. But if you look on the other side of the DNA, it's going to go in the opposite direction. So it's going to go in the 3' prime to 5'. Prime. 
So DNA is said to be anti-parallel. So it's going to flow in one direction on one side, and it's going to flow in the opposite direction. They're parallel to each other, but they're flowing in opposite directions. And so if we were to look at across from the three prime end here, we're going to have a five prime end over here. Now, why is that important? Well, when you're building DNA, when we're going to add another nucleotide on, so here's one nucleotide, here's another nucleotide. When we're going to add another nucleotide, we can only add it on the three prime end. And so I could add a new nucleotide on this side, but I can't add it to the five prime end. And so when we get to DNA replication, how DNA copies itself, that's going to be really, really important. We could add one down here to this three prime end, because this is going to be our other nucleotide right here. So we could add one here, but we can't add it to the five prime end. Okay, so enough with the three prime and the five prime. Let's talk about some other uh, the large parts of DNA. If we look at the backbone, so the backbone is going to be on this side and on this side, and a kind of DNA looks like a ladder. In other words, if this is the backbone, then the rungs of the ladder are going to be the nitrogenous bases that go right down the middle. But if we look at the backbone itself, it's simply a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate, uh, a, a deoxyribose phosphate, deoxyribose phosphate, deoxyribose, and so the back is going to be the same with every nucleotide. And if we look on the other side, the other side is going to be phosphate, deoxyribose, phosphate. It's going to be the same thing on the other side. So the backbone is going to be relatively boring. That's not too exciting. But if we look to the inside, that's where we're going to have these purines and the pyrimidines, these nitrogenous bases. And if you look right here, the adenine, which again is a purine, so it's got these two rings, that's going to be connected using these hydrogen bonds to the pyrimidine on the other side. And if we have a, a purine on this side, we're going to have a pyrimidine on the other side. And there's base pairing. In other words, adenine is always going to bond to thymine. And if we look down here, guanine is going to bond to cytosine. Or this would be a cytosine and a guanine. And this is going to be an adenine and a thymine. Now, what do I mean by they bond to each other? Well, the bonds are going to be right here in the middle. So if you look at DNA, structure of DNA, every one of these atoms is going to be connected to every other atom by a covalent bond, except if we look right down here in the middle. If we look right down in the middle, these are actually hydrogen bonds. Remember, hydrogen bonds are very weak. So these are relatively weak bonds that go right down the middle. Why is that important? Well, if I pull DNA in either direction like this, the DNA will unzip in the middle, and we're just breaking those hydrogen bonds in the middle. If we let go of it, it'll just go right back together again because those hydrogen bonds are going to form. And just like adenine is covalently bonded to the nucleotide below it, it's hydrogen bond between the two. And so that'll be super important, like when we're doing DNA replication or when we're making messenger RNA, these hydrogen bonds, super easy to break. And so that would be the gross anatomy of uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. Those are going to be the parts. Um, what's important is that we can store information in here. So when we talk about transcription and translation, every three letters here are going to code for one amino acid. And so if we were to break down the word deoxyribonucleic acid, you should be able to understand where that name comes from. And so in other words, the deoxyribo part comes from this. It comes from that deoxyribose sugar. The nucleic part comes from the idea that it's found inside a cell. The DNA is going to be found inside the nucleus of the cell. And then the acid part actually comes from the phosphate group. Phosphates are going to donate hydrogen, and so that's going to make it acidic, which will become important in just a sec. So here's our DNA. It's just repeated nucleotides over and over and over. But we know that DNA looks like this. And so DNA is going to have this three-dimensional shape. And scientists think that RNA was the first genetic material on our planet. And then DNA is kind of an upgrade to that. And so if we see this is our DNA, it's essentially that same ladder, but that ladder has been twisted into a helix. And the reason why it's not really drawn here is that there are also going to be hydrogen bonds that are holding each of these. So there's going to be hydrogen bonds here and hydrogen bonds here. And so basically what that does is gives it this three-dimensional shape. And that makes it really, really stable. And so DNA has some advantages over RNA. Number one, uh, it has a more stable three-dimensional shape. But the other nice part is that we could have a mutation on one side of the DNA 
And since mutations are passed from generation to generation to generation, if it's in DNA, then we have a backup copy on the other side. So if there's a mistake here, we can actually look at the DNA that's on the other side, and then enzymes can actually cut this out and replace it on the other side. And so that's DNA. Those are the major parts of DNA. Um, and it's really not that complex. Uh, if you understand baking, breaking it down to a nucleotide uh, and the idea that it's simply just a ladder, a ladder of information, and that information essentially tells a cell how do you make a protein. And so that's DNA, and I hope that's helpful.